Hello, Cascade writers, future attendees, future guests. Um, thank you for being here with us today. This is another one of our Intro to Your Prose interviews. And today we are, we are with the immensely talented, illustrious Claire Eddy. Claire, how are you doing today? Thank you for coming on. I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. And I hope you're well as well. I am well. I'm, I'm very, very well. In fact, um, it is an honor to be talking to somebody who is up there at the at the top of the tour uh, pyramid. I love tour very much. And so everything you guys do is just amazing. Um, can you please tell us a little about yourself, uh, what you do, and just sort of how you got to where you are today with tour and, and everything else you're involved in? Okay. Well, um, the new title as of oh, six months ago, eight months ago. Um, I'm a vice president and editorial director. Um, we have seven imprints under the Tor Publishing Group. Mm -hmm. And my colleague, Will Hitton, and I uh, run five of those imprints. Um, that's Tor, Tor.com, Starscape, Tortine, and Nightfire, which is our, our horror line. So we we are running all of those imprints. And I this God help me and save me, this August will make 39 years that I've been with Tor. Um and I started out doing science fiction fantasy i've done mysteries i've done thrillers i've done historicals um i've done romanticy even before romanticy was romanticy mm -hmm. and um as you can imagine going up the ladder and now that i'm in the c-suite i'm doing fewer titles but the upside of it is i'm i'm kind of thinking them of all of our titles as all of my kids now so it's it's a different perspective and and it's as fun that's good yeah yeah and as to how i came into the business um i started in academia i was okay. in uh, medieval history and in some ways my knowledge of medieval history has helped oddly enough with fantasy so i kind of moved from that field to this field um yeah so that's pretty much who i am that's awesome um that inspires a couple of questions in me um first of all i would like to know so coming from the work you used to do at tour to now your new position of editorial director how does that shift to the c-suite sort of shift your perspective on the work and your relationship to the books that you work with in, in particular? Well, I kind of think of it as an evolution hmm. because it, it, it kind of like going from local to global hmm. mm -hmm. and, and all of the tools that I used in helping individual authors be the best that they can be, mm -hmm. I'm now viewing that in a mentorship role where I'm helping other editors mm -hmm. develop their authors and their careers. Right. So okay. it's 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 local to global. Mm -hmm. Now I still have a couple of my own authors that I work with. So that hasn't gone away. But it's just a it's another hat with a slightly different perspective. Mm -hmm. because I'm now looking at the entire list and how those lists balance out because we want we want every book to succeed and so how do we match the right tools to the right team how do we get the word out on every title yeah no that's fascinating that uh zooming out that perspective and like you said you're kind of taking on more of a mentorship role for the people who used to be in your position um, and they're each kind of helping govern all these different imprints because Tor has gotten so big over the last uh, few years, and it's just awesome to see. Um, 
for people who may not know much about uh, that part of the industry, the, the C-suite side or even just the editorial side, um, how many, what does it kind of look like, the breakdown of at Tor? Like how many editors are in charge of each imprint and how does that kind of management go? Um, well, as I say right now, Will and I are handling five of the seven imprints. Okay. Um, Monique Patterson runs our Bramble line, which is our romance line. Mm -hmm. And Linda Quinton runs our Forge line, which is commercial, mainstream, thrillers, historicals, mysteries, um, narrative nonfiction, and nonfiction. Um, within our group, uh, Kelly Lonesome um, is spearheading our Nightfire horror line. So she's she's running the line and we kind of oversee it. And then you have a whole bunch of editors of various levels underneath those imprints. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm sure you guys have have quite a roster these days yes. to keep up with everything. <laughs> um, that's awesome, Claire. So um, as uh, the editorial director, and you'll be leading a critique group with us this year. So I'm just curious as to um, what sort of unique skill set do you see yourself as bringing to a critique group setting, other than just your vast knowledge and experience, of course? Well, thank you for the compliment. Um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm very much looking forward to this coming weekend because I get in some ways to take off the editorial director hat mm -hmm. and, and put the editor hat back on. <laughs> and that's a great deal of fun because you can get in and play with the words and get in and, and talk about the, the, not just the editing process, but the mindset behind the creator and what are you trying to do and are you communicating that effectively and is there a way that we can work on on shaping the narrative as it were because it's all storytelling and mm -hmm. depending on where you are on your journey you know there there are things that we can talk about when you're just starting out and and the kinds of um narrative challenges that someone who's at the beginning of their journey might have mm -hmm. um and then someone who is maybe further along in their journey um and if so if i'm bringing anything to the table it's it's the body of knowledge that i have where i can say to someone say at the the beginning of their journey you've workshopped that first three pages to the end haven't you <laughs> maybe maybe we look at that or mm -hmm. you know maybe you've maybe you've started the story in the wrong place mm -hmm. it's possible i will admit i have a i have a personal bugaboo i'm not a big fan of prologues yeah. I've never been a fan of, of prologues, but that's just me. And, and and the other thing is, so yeah, there's this wealth of um, experience, but I'm not the expert by any means. And and we're going on this journey together. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think one of the things that I really like about a critique group is that, yeah, I might have some insight but it's not my way of the highway. It's, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're talking in a group. And very often I learn, I, I learn something for every time I do this. And it's like, hmm, I need to think about that. Okay, that's kind of an interesting take. So it, 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 should, it shouldn't be a monologue, it should be a dialogue. Absolutely, and how do you find the dynamic of a critique group? um sort of behooves and benefits that that dialogue type of conversation that more open discussion of the work uh rather than uh monologuing as maybe you would do in a panel you know where people are sitting there to listen to you but how does the critique group setting in particular help help with that conversation? well 
I, I, I take my role very seriously. Mm. And if I feel like someone is monologuing, particularly someone else's, I was like, well, that's very interesting. It, it, you kind of move it along mm -hmm. and, and you want, you want it to be a collaborative experience. And it, part of that is um, behaviorism mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, it's a word, it, 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 it used to be not a great word. I mean, it is a great word, but um, in corporate America, um, a lot, not that much attention was paid to emotional intelligence mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and now that's the big buzzword and you know um i've always believed that kindness is one of the most important qualities in an interaction mm -hmm. it doesn't doesn't mean you lie mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you sugarcoat a situation mm -hmm. but there are more effective ways to get your point across that can that can also address an issue mm -hmm. and so sometimes you find in critique groups and whatever it's like okay you're being passionate but are you actually helping this other person on their journey right. and, it, and, it, and at the end what you really want is you want everyone to feel like they've gained something mm -hmm. from the process and and part of that is emotional intelligence and kindness. Mm -hmm. So no, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's one thing to give somebody a critique or a criticism that, you know, maybe it points out a weakness in the story or somewhere the story could be improved or a valuable consideration. But people are also a lot more receptive to things if you're not like <laughs> stabbing them while you do it, you know? Uh and so yeah, what on that note too. Oh, sorry. Did you want to say? Oh, something? Well, I, I, I was just going to say. It, in some ways, it's part of the larger conversation, because one of the things I say when I was going to writers' conference in per, per, you know, in person, I would start the conversation by saying, "You're all writers." Yeah. Whether or not you ever get published in traditional publishing, and now we have this wonderful. Um, growth industry of mm -hmm. indie, indie writers and in fact over the last couple of years our organization has taken on you know travis baldry wonderful mm -hmm. example mm -hmm. tj clune wonderful example people who have done well in the indie market are now choosing to do at least some of their titles mm -hmm. with traditional publishing yeah so whether or not you get published whether you do just the fact that you've chosen to embark on this part of the journey you're writers there are stories everywhere mm -hmm. and it's a certain subset of the population that sees those stories mm -hmm. and so that that's the start and what that means for me is that if you are a writer you are a creative person mm -hmm. and the very act of creating requires a huge amount of bravery mm -hmm. and it's tied to ego and for those of us who are on the other side yes i can be creative but my greatest strength is to help that person mm -hmm. develop their craft mm -hmm. their creation and and depending on who you are each author requires a different conversation yeah how how do you tell someone and I use a, the, the car analogy, you know, you've got a great car, but you're missing the engine. Mm, mm -hmm, right. You've got a great car, 
but it doesn't have a steering wheel and only has three wheels on the car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but how about this? How mm -hmm. about that? And through my editorial career, what I've done is, again, it's usually, and every editor is different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My path is, it's not my way of the highway. It's, this is what I see. What do you think? Or mm -hmm. I have an idea. Or how about this? And I have found, again, over the years, if you come at it sideways, the best experience when someone comes back to me and goes, well, that, that suggestion is stupid. <laughs> but, and, and what follows the but mm -hmm. very often is like 10 times better than anything I could have come up with. But yeah. I've gone in sideways and I've given them an opening and I've allowed them to think about it. And they go, oh, I don't have an engine. Okay, how do I get how do I get an engine? So it's again, it's 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 not a monologue, it's dialogue, it's coming at things sideways, it's giving people ideas in the best way mm -hmm. because they come up with their own ideas. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's that idea of, especially in that developmental stage, right? You're you're pointing out areas for consideration, and rather than like areas where the story is weak or where the story like taking out some of that negativity, and it's more like it's less about what the story is lacking a lot of the time. I feel, and more just like what the story needs or what the story wants to say but isn't quite saying yet. Right. Um, and it sounds like that's what you're helping give people. At least that's the way I'm interpreting it. Um, I think you've, I think you've hit over that, yes. Um, and it, that uh, brings up another cool thing, I think, about the critique group. But can you speak to the value? And this will be my last question before we kind of do our wrap-up question. Um, mm -hmm. Can you speak to the value, especially as somebody who came from academia and a history background into, like, editing more than being maybe a writer first, which I think is a lot of how people get into it, mm -hmm. um, to the value of not only writing your own stories and being in a critique group from that angle, but also reading other people's work and listening to other people's stories and learning how to critique them and edit them. Can you speak to the value of that for your own work as a writer too? Oh, I, I think so. And, and one slight correction, I'm not a writer. I'm not a writer. Um, I'm totally on the other side right. of the fence. Um, absolutely. Read, 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 read outside your genre. Be, be an omnivore because the more you experience life either through direct experience or through virtual experience or working with other writers on their projects, it's only going to expand your worldview. Mm -hmm. And the more you do that, the more tools you bring in, yeah. you know, and, and it's, it's at the end of the day, it's going to be hard. It's going to be boring. It's going to be frustrating and maddening. And, oh my God, I've got to plant my butt in that chair and come up with another 100 to a thousand, how many words, whatever the word count is for you for that day. Mm -hmm. You got to plant your butt in the chair every day. You've got to do that. And um, Ray Bradbury, 50 million years ago, once <laughs> gave advice, and it still holds true, is that you're right on day one. When you get to day 10, you look at day one and go, oh. You go to day 100, you look at day 10 and go, hmm. A thousand and back and forward and back and forward and back. The more you do it, the more tools in your toolkit you will have. Mm -hmm. I will I will tell you a thing. Most of the traditional publishers have a clause in their contracts. When you're doing subsequent editions of a work, mm -hmm. Authors are only allowed a certain percent, mm -hmm. a certain small percent 
to make revisions. Now, if, if there's a typo, if there's an actual logic flaw, you know, we could, if you allow an author to go in and revise, they will always want to revise. Yeah. Oh my, oh my God, I, pub <laughs> I published that 20 years ago. I'm such a better writer. It's like, no, 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 no. You let it go. Mm -hmm. You let it go out into the world and you do it. I mean, uh, J.M. Barry, Peter Pan right when it was the play originally came out and et cetera et cetera and it there were major differences mm -hmm. to the to the original fiction to the play and the peter pan that we now have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he was interviewed towards the end of his life and he kind of went it's not my i have to let it go yeah i have to let it go it's not my it's not my peter it's now there, Peter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that's a hard thing. That that's a very hard thing. So you hone your craft, you get it to the point where you feel comfortable about it, and then you gotta release it into the world. Yeah, absolutely. And and go on to the next project and go on to the next project and go on to the next project. So but but that's the fun part. That's that's the fun part. That is the fun part. And uh, though writing in itself is is fun and beautiful in its own right, it's also difficult. And uh, putting it out in the world is just as important as writing it because you need to hear that feedback and get those critiques. And, you know, that's how you really improve, in my opinion. But it's also terrifying. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because because, <laughs> un because until you open that door, it's your perfect child. Yep. And then you open the door and, <laughs> and, and and it's but it's hard. It's hard, but it but it is all part of the process. And yeah. it's 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 things like writers groups that help you on your journey. Mm -hmm. Um you find an agent, the mm -hmm. agent will help you, the editor will help you. It, it it's it's a journey. It it really is a journey um and you know that that it takes a village yeah um, it does it does take a village um to do it so it absolutely does um and cascade writers is your own little village this year uh claire eddie will be one of our village leaders and we're very glad to have you there uh and speaking of that um i am putting a little bit of a list together of if you have any current or classic uh must read books that you're super hooked on right now or that you that would help other writers improve oh 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 see it goes back to children it goes <laughs> Too back many. to children <laughs> it's so many so and i don't want to get yelled at for any of, the, any of the ones that i've missed but if you if you go to our website if you go to our website um I, I'm so lucky. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really, I feel so blessed to be where I am because I'm surrounded by so many talent pe talented people who mm -hmm. are so passionate about their authors, their books. And we just had a we just had a meeting uh, last week where it's called Meet the Books. Mm. And it's the first meeting that we have every season and the season that we were talking about, because time has no meaning and everything <laughs> is so immediate. Um, we're already starting to talk about fall 2025. Yeah, I believe okay? it. <laughs> um, and we're talking about debuts and we're talking about big books and we're talking about, you know, the next in the series. And, and I always come, always, I always come away from that meeting going, oh my God, I want to read that. Oh my God, I want to read that. Oh my God, I can't wait. Is it in? Is it in yet? Is it mm -hmm. in yet? <laughs> um, that's why I say it's, it's so hard to pick one because it's like, oh my God. Do, do you see all these children and that I get to help all the, and I don't want to, 
um, infanta, infantilize that word that I can't say very well. Um, but I do feel a limit, like children. There are babies. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a good gig. I like it. You have an amazing gig. Uh, Tor is one of my favorite publishers. Um, I have a funny kind of story about Tor. So I, I run this podcast, Fermented Fiction. And yes. um, the uh, person the person who handles like promotion and PR for a bunch of your Tor Nightfire people is the same person. Okay. Um, so I, I went to her to book Leopoldo Gout like months ago. Right. And then I went to her just, or I went uh, just randomly looking for how to book P. Jelly Clark and found out same agent. And then <laughs> today I was uh, booking uh, Johnny Compton, same person. And so uh -huh. now, now I know her really well. She knows what I want. Um, but it's just awesome. You guys have an awesome crew over there and so many amazing writers and books um, in your stable there. So it's, yeah, it's really, really cool. You can't go wrong with tour everybody um just well, go check it all thank out you. <laughs> thank you i um, really appreciate it oh yeah no we uh, we appreciate you um is there maybe is there a book on craft perhaps that maybe helped you in your editing journey or your publishing journey oh i i couldn't tell you i mean i know they're out there <laughs> um for me it was seat of the pants okay fair enough it, it was it was seat of the pants uh but i know they're out there and i know there are good books i i just can't speak to it sorry hey no worries um i appreciate you uh being honest about that and sorry for kind of dropping that question on you but uh <laughs> no, no 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 worries no worries you know usually people uh you never know what people what their journey was like, right? And so, seat of the pants, everybody, that can get you all the way to the top of tour. So, just so you know. Well, it, yeah. Well, that <laughs> that is some hard work. <laughs> that and a lot of hard work. Seat of the pants is the hardest way to do it, usually. I think. Um, well, I will. I will tell you. I'll tell you a story. Um, once, I, I had an assistant, wonderful person, and they'd been on the job for about nine months or so and they said you know i'm curious about something i said what and they said why did you hire me and i thought well that's an interesting question <laughs> and they said no 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 I, they they asked because it's they they were coming they were coming to publishing completely sideways that they wanted to get into publishing and they right and they said and and it, it was working out great and great assistant they've done great it was fine mm -hmm. And I and they said, but why? And I said, oh, that's easy. And they said, really? And I said, well, when we were having the um, the interview process, um, I asked, well, what are the sorts of things that they've been doing? And they list a whole bunch of things. And I said, that one, that one. And they said, what? And I said, bartender. Yep. <laughs> you are you were a bartender. And they said how can that possibly translate to publishing? Mm -hmm. I said, you're a people person. You can multitask. You can turn on a dime to take <laughs> care of a situation. Mm -hmm. You can handle yourself in a stressful situation. And you're interested in stories. And they went, wow, you got that from bartender? And I went, mm-hmm. Mm hmm absolutely yeah. yeah so it's you you can again it comes back to stories you mm -hmm. can find stories wherever you go mm -hmm. wherever you go and if you have that mindset then i don't want to call it a curse because it's not a curse it's 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 a, it's a wonderful happenstance but if you're the type of person that sees stories, you can't unsee them. It's true. Very you true. You can't. I mean, mm -hmm. the 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 other insane story, well, I mean not insane, but I, I tell a story on myself. Edit mysteries. Edit mysteries. Fine. Right. 
So a year or so ago, pre-pandemic, I'm in a drugstore. I'm online. There's a woman ahead of me. There's a guy ahead of her, right? This is a generic drugstore. Doesn't have bells and whistles. <laughs> okay. He is standing online with a gallon of bleach, tubing, rubber gloves, <laughs> And something else. I don't remember uh -huh. what the something else was. And I'm watching, and he goes up, and he pays for everything. And I'm standing there, and I go, huh. The woman ahead of me turns, and she says, excuse me? I went, oh, no, no, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I was only thinking to myself. I was going, I wonder where the body is. <laughs> yep. And she looked at me, and I said, well, you saw what he had. <laughs> you you saw yeah. you saw and the words are leaving my mouth and as more of the words leave my mouth I go oh Claire you did it again stop talking stop talk because because I saw the story mm -hmm. now it probably was absolutely mundane and but that's what people do that's what writers do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they see like oh well if that then that then that hmm how can i how can i put that together absolutely and that's uh that's one of the funniest things right if you tell somebody you're a writer one of the first things they might say to you is uh oh i have a great story idea for you <laughs> and i'm always like i'll tell you i'll tell you one thing i definitely don't need it's more ideas <laughs> it's more ideas well the flip side of that is if your friend's a writer don't tell them any old stories, old That's childhood right. stories, <laughs> unless you are perfectly fine with somehow it'll get, it'll get hidden up. It'll be different names. It'll be different. I said, don't tell anybody, don't tell a writer a story. Cause Idea that'll, that, that'll go with, oh, wow. That would make a great story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So true though. Yeah, we see the stories everywhere and we're excited to see the stories that y'all bring to Cascade Writers Workshop this summer. Um, if you are in Claire Eddy's group, we hope you enjoy this interview, kind of get to know who she is and what you're, uh, what you're in store for. Um, Claire, thank you so much for taking the time today and we can't wait to see you this summer. Great. Have a great day.